Hi, I'm Cassie. And I'm Mariah. And this is the Cassie and Mariah Show, a podcast where two long-distance internet friends, that's us, discuss navigating their 20s, their disability, and chronic illness. Mariah, what's up? We just uh, we just recorded your birthday present opening. <laughs> yes, if you want to check that out, please go to TCMS Pod, our Instagram, to watch it. Cassie gave me some very amazing, like very specific gifts. Oh, they're uh, one very of them, specific. including one of them, including a or one of them being a um, hand like crocheted. Uh, like, what would you call it? Wall I, hanging. Like, a wall hanging of um, the Phoebe Bridgers album, Stranger in the Alps, the cover art. And I cried because I love that album so much. So this was very, this is very sentimental and very unexpected. Um, I got some candy, some really fun stickers, including some Hello Kitty and some Furby stickers and some very uh, 90s themed throwback uh, stationery which was very cute we actually have matching stationery now so i love that a lot but damn right please go yeah go watch the video we post on instagram if you want to see everything um but yeah cassie let's get into it how was your week we'll switch it up you can go first Ooh, uh well yeah because save the best for last because honestly what a normal week (laughs) <laughs> um, the first one in a long time too for you it's fine you know i i can have a normal week i yes <laughs> i yeah i didn't do anything i didn't do anything crazy i didn't go to a soccer game i didn't go to a concert i didn't go to a wedding <laughs> i i i uh finished two of my classes <laughs> and i apparently won an award <laughs> me yeah. it was a normal week <laughs> um yeah i randomly got this award being or (laughs) this email being like congratulations and it's the end of the school year so i was like oh maybe like i don't know i'm like my brain is so like as if i'm done already that i was like oh maybe it's just the usual like honor roll type emails they sent and i'm like wait grades aren't finalized yet because we're not done yet and i was like what is this uh so yeah i won an award from uh the college of urban and public affairs um at psu which is yeah like one of the colleges within the university i still don't even understand how universities are structured especially as a liberal studies student and that was the kind of honestly the most shocking thing about it because i immediately googled the award because i'm just like is this something like i I didn't know it existed and so to me I'm just like is this something they send to a bunch of people like I was like genuinely confused um and uh no they like annually pick like one student for these handful of awards and um and so I somehow got yeah the undergraduate student like academic achievement award for the um urban and public affairs college and I'm just like completely shocked because like I'm a liberal studies. I, I'm just shocked that they picked somebody who's not majoring in something that's in that school. Like, I'm minoring oh, in right. community development. Most of my classes are in that school. But, like, I'm not. I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm just shook that they didn't choose, like, a community development student or something. I, I'm just completely shook. And, um, yeah, because I guess you get, like, nominated by um, – you know, professors, and then there's, like, a, like, a, within that college, they do, like, all the program heads and department heads all vote on the recipients, and I'm just like, oh my god, who nominated me? Cute. Um, so, yeah, love to win an award I didn't know existed, um, wow, yeah, I was, it did make my day, I was like, wow. Um, and then, yeah, but like I said, it was a pretty normal week. It did end with some, like, good socializing, like, went to lunch with a friend, went to my friend's graduation party. Yeah, yesterday I went to uh, my friend's dance performance. She does uh, folklorico, like, ballet, uh, which is a traditional... Um, like Mexican dance style and so yeah they had their like recital yesterday and so me and some other friends went to support her and it was so lovely and interesting and just very impressive because it looks very hard and it's also very satisfying because there's a lot of like footwork involved and like 
um, the shoes that they wear, um, that she showed me have, like, a bunch of, like, tiny little, like, you know how, like, tap shoes obviously be tippity-tappity, like, right. metal on the, the bottom. bottom, yeah, um, so instead of that, it's, like, they have literally a bunch of tiny little nails in the bottom that make for, like, oh. a, like, like the, um, no, so, like, it's the nail heads themselves, like, they're literally nailed in. So as opposed to the pointy end being what stuck out, it's like it's like literally you nail you have a bunch of nail like tiny nails that are nailed into the shoe, so that way the nail heads themselves when you tippity tap them on the floor, um, then it makes a louder noise. Um, oh, yeah. So it's very. That sounds like it would sound really cool. Yeah, and I, as a child, I loved watching tap dancing because it scratched an itch in my brain, um, <laughs> and so similarly, <laughs> um, and it was very cool because uh, it's like uh, it was the third time like that this local like dance company's done this um, and like done this like recital and stuff and um, and so like there were literally students ranging from like very very young to like adults who do this and so it was super interesting and yeah just fun to learn more about and just I don't know see an art form I don't normally get to see nice oh I love that that sounds like it was very fun yeah but what about you what was your week like so my week was like I mean I had a vendor event on Saturday which is very fun ran into a few friends that came by and I thought it was a good day. I mean, like, it was a good day in the sense of, like, seeing people and, like, family came by and stuff like that, which that's what I like about local events is, like, I'll have relatives that try to come by and support me, and I always think that that's very fun. I also love just, like, making friends at vendor events, you know, with customers or even people that are also other vendors. Um, but overall, like, the event itself, like, business-wise, wasn't really that good, and, like... Last week's episode I discussed where, like, you sometimes a, a lot of these events you, like, not a lot of these events, actually, but, like, this event in particular I had to get a vendor license for and, um, you know, paperwork like that just to vend in this specific town. And it kind of sucks when, like, you go through all this legwork and, like, the event doesn't even turn out to be worth it. And I know perspective is everything. Like, you know, I made more money there than I would if I just sat home that day. But also the fact of, like, you know, schlepping everything out, you know, marking that day off on your calendar to vend that day and not going somewhere else to vend or, you know, I only like to do like one event a weekend. When I do double header weekends, it's a lot because I prioritize my rest. So I can't have my Sunday rest day if I have a vendor event on Sunday and, you know, the, the day before on Saturday. So I was like, man, like I, if I, you know, if I didn't do this event, I would have tried to do something else on Sunday. Like, I don't know. I just, of course, like in hindsight, I really thought that uh the day could have been optimized by doing a different event but you know it is what it is I tried somewhere new and I guess I learned my lesson <laughs> um and then on Sunday or like you know yeah the other day I went to see the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie um which like okay I'm not a big Marvel fan I like the Spider-Man movies and I like Guardians of the Galaxy and that's it I don't like Chris Pratt. I think that he's genuinely annoying. But this movie in particular, I did just... I've seen all the Guardians of the Galaxy movies in theaters, so I wanted to keep the tradition up and see it in a theater. Um, and I did, I did enjoy it, though, because it focused a lot of the attention on another member of the group, Rocket Raccoon. And I love raccoons, and there's a lot of them in this movie. And I was just, like, having a great time. So it was a good movie to just kind of, like shut off the world and, and watch um but like also with just like talk about vendor events is like I am deciding that I'm not really going to do too many events this summer mostly because it's hot it's just it's hot and I don't want to schlep all my stuff outside on a 95 degree day you know because sometimes other people aren't outside or people go to the beach like they're not really gonna be you know they're less likely to walk around at a farmer's market type of event they'd rather go to the beach so I was going to kind of pick up more hours at my, um, my like part-time or week job really. So this way, like I at least have like a bit of a stable income. And then also just like, I like my job and I would like to be there more. I really enjoy my coworkers and my friends there. So I do want to just like be there more and 
be a productive member of society and I did buy my Disney plane ticket for October so I do have to make that money back <laughs> so um yeah I'm looking forward to working more <laughs> this summer and just like you know participating in the, the capitalist construct. grind yes <laughs> The capitalist grind, unfortunately. Because there's still no free high-speed rail between our houses. <laughs> I know, where I'm like, I could be doing this time, I could be doing something else in my time, like hanging out with Cassie. Damn it. <laughs> Y'all that are interested in my business, <laughs> I'm working on some new bracelets, which I've said in the past, but this time I'm actually going to do it because I feel very inspired. I'm really into angel numbers, you know, like the 111, 444, 777. And I wear a bracelet every day that says 777 on it. And it's my favorite angel number because it's for like new beginnings and good luck. And I just liked it. I like it a lot. So I actually was coming up with a few ideas to make angel number bracelets. And I got all of these really nice beads earlier this year. And I just like really didn't know what to do with them because I was like, I want to make obviously new bracelets, but I just like didn't feel inspired with the designs that I was coming up with. But I'm like, oh, if I make angel number bracelets, like I definitely am going to want to wear these. So I imagine other people would like to wear them too. So I'm going to be working on those this summer. Um, hopefully we'll have them out like halfway through the summer or like when I get back from vacation, things like that. So follow Mariah's Crystal Studio on Instagram for more updates about that. But yeah, I just, it's sometimes like, I don't know. I always go back and forth on whether I even like doing my business, but I decided that I like doing it when I feel passionate about what I'm creating. Um, cause that's like the whole point. Like I want to make sure that what I'm doing brings me joy and I get joy out of like actually coming up with new ideas and not just making the same thing over and over again. Nice. I have an angel number question for you. Yes. I was looking ahead at my, uh, my, my show tracker list and the Boy Genius show, I believe, is going to be my 333rd show. What does it mean? That's so interesting. What does it mean? <laughs> Wait, there's a certain graphic I, I reference when I look at 333. Because actually, my Xbox gamer tag, I'm sassfress333. Well, and then, you know, your Instagram. I, my Instagram's 777. Yeah. Yeah. 333 it's your time to shine you're living your life with great joy and you have all the tools you need to live a happy and healthy life align your thoughts and emotions and direct their energy into your outer reality you will fulfill your life's purpose as long as you are authentic to yourself your spiritual guides are all around you and sending you love support and guidance facts boy genius are my spiritual guides yes and i actually think too is because it's interesting because Boy Genius aligns with, like, the Three of Cups. Like, that's what they make, like, some of their merch as. And that's what, like, all the girls have is, like, tattoos. And Three of Cups means, like, celebration, joy. Um, like, it, it's something along the lines of, like, divine feminine or, like, uh, divine, like, it's, like, literally, like, friendship energy. So, that's fun. I like that that show is your 333. Ooh. Same. Seems big. Right? So this week's episode, we're going to discuss internalized ableism and societal expectations. There's two main topics that we're going to go over, one of them being relationships, whether they're like platonic or romantic relationships, and the other one being living situations and the concept of moving out. <laughs> <laughs> and like for those who, uh, I don't know, maybe have literally never heard the term of internalized ableism, it's kind of just like ableist beliefs that you that like disabled people hold within themselves obviously disabled people can be ableist towards other disabled people but like you can also be ableist towards yourself and like hold these beliefs that society has like taught you or that you have just somehow have ingrained in yourself um in the same way that there can be other internalized forms of discrimination it's really more so about thought patterns and just like how you view yourself and the world around you um and it can, like, I don't know, these are things that can really, like, affect your mental health quite a lot. Yeah, and, like, even your perspective on your life, internalized ableism was something that I, like, 
honestly like really struggled with even throughout high school college of just like not completely identifying as a disabled person or even a chronically ill person and constantly comparing myself to my friends that did not face the same type of struggles that I did in my life. Mm. Yeah, and I think too, like it just the impact of that 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 has on your self esteem, especially with yeah. Oh my god, comparisons like we could have a whole episode on comparisons. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the like first things, at least for me, that comes up um, when thinking about internalized ableism is like feeling like a burden. Um, I think because. I think it, I think the reason it's one of the first things I think of is just because um, it's one of the things I've I feel like most recently unlearned um, over the past few years just like having friends who just help meet my needs with like mm-hmm. without me even having to ask and without complaint and without like like just in a completely genuinely like you know like act of service type of love like just you know interdependency solidarity like you know like just very genuine like you know you're my friend of course I want to help you you know like not not making me feel bad about it um and it was interesting because today I was reading um I just started reading Judy Human's memoir and in the first chapter she talks about how um she kind of started to yeah view herself like because when you're a kid and you're disabled it's like she was talking about how it's like yeah like her friends would never question the fact that she's disabled they'd be like yeah we're just gonna push you and we're gonna go over here and play dolls or whatever you know there was never there was never this question it was never like well like we're not gonna include you because you're disabled it's like well, we're just going to find a way to make it work because we're kids and we want to play. And so it's like what we learn about ourselves as disabled people and like about our place in the world is very much taught to us. And um, she mentions that like, you know, her mom would always like really greatly like advocate for her, like with like being able to finally get her into some sort of school and stuff like that. Um, But that like there would be times when because her mom fought so much for her that when there were smaller barriers to face she like as an advocate on behalf of her child would kind of be like oh like well let's not worry about that because at least you're in the building kind of thing so like uh, the example she gave was that I think it was like when she would go to like I can't remember if it was, like, a Bible camp or a Jewish summer camp. or There was something like that um, mm-hmm. that where, you know, most of the day was spent on the main floor of the building, but then there'd be one activity where the kids would all go to the basement and she couldn't go. And the, like, whoever was running it was like, oh, like, because she was so young at the time, they were like, oh, I could just easily carry her downstairs, you know, if that would be okay. And, like, her mom had told them, like, no, don't worry about it. And it was, like, uh-huh. those kinds of things where she starts to, like, learn that, she, like, that she should, like, view herself as a burden for needing help or needing more accessibility. And I was kind of just, like, oof. Because I, even though I've been unlearning that I'm, like, that I'm not a burden or, like, learning that I'm not a burden kind of thing, it's, like, I never knew where that came from and, like, where that was taught to me. I mean, obviously, like the world's not built for me so needing any increased accessibility right. makes you feel like yeah. a burden but it was kind of just like oh because like I kind of you know relate in the fact that it's like my mom would help me figure out accessibility stuff for school when I was a kid and didn't you know I'm five I don't I don't know what accessibility is I don't know what's happening um but then it's like I feel like there were other times that it was just kind of like oh well don't worry about that like where it like I don't know there'd be like field trips that it's like oh we're not gonna worry about how you should be able to go on this field trip because like there's harder you know there's there's worse things to miss out on or you know like just like things like that where it's like I I can't even really remember specifics honestly but I just know that it's like kind of like those are some of the ways that like we get taught to feel like a burden is through even our very loving parents because they it's almost like they've 
in a weird way internalized the ableism too of like being an advocate for us of like mm-hmm. that like they don't want to feel like a burden either but it's like right by them not wanting to feel like a burden it's like yeah well you're the one who actually needs help so that's saying that you're a burden you know yeah it's like they're worried about inconveniencing another person on your behalf mm-hmm. and like they're like oh well you'll live not going to that field trip or not participating in that event whereas like oh, if we brought this up to the director or the organizer, like, we're making their jobs harder. We're making Mm -hmm. it harder for them to, like, you know, do whatever that needs to get done. And, like, yeah. Like, what? (laughs) Because it's like, yeah, you you know, it's like, although, yeah, you're not missing out on huge things. You're missing out on, like, some coming-of-age things, like going on a field trip with your classmates and, um, you know, participating in other school activities that are, like, fun activities. Yeah, like, a couple of the... Um, parts that I can't even remember if I underlined them or if I bought a used copy and the other person <laughs> underlined stuff. But um, she was ta- she was like, now, why would my mother, a woman who spent half her life working to overcome barriers for me, have declined an offer to have included me in an in an activity because she worried I would be a burden? And then later she was like, my mother worried when my needs became a burden, so I thought of myself and my needs as a burden, too. I just kind of accepted it. It's it's so interesting to put it in a perspective like that, because, like, there's a lot of times where I've also faced similar things of just, like, you know, like, when I used to use an oxygen machine when I was younger to sleep, and it would be like, oh, I'm sleeping over at somebody's house. My mom would tell me not to bring it because it's too loud and it would disturb other people in the house. Mm. And it's like, okay, but like, I feel better if I use it. Like, otherwise I wake up in the morning and I have a horrible night's sleep because I can't, my oxygen drops when I'm asleep. It just was one of those things that like always stuck with me. And you know, it's like, you're obviously it's not meant in a malicious way. It's just like, oh, well, you're being considerate of other people when it's like, what about me though like Mm -hmm. you should you know i should be your first thought yep yeah or just like i don't know comments that would be made like when i was younger about like do you really need to take your wheelchair because it's an inconvenience for other people to have to transport it and stuff (sighs) <sighs> i'm not allowed to get around anywhere like <laughs> yeah like what you want me to be forced to walk and therefore be forced to be tired and and go through pain yeah like all because of another person's made up completely like fantasy expectations that they have that they probably would their lives would not be any different you know whether or not you know you use your mobility device meanwhile your life is completely different mm-hmm Oh, my God, that was the other really interesting thing in the book, side note, is that, like, I mean, she was born and disabled before electric wheelchairs were invented. Really? What year was she born? Um, I don't remember, but she was saying, like, you know, because she, yeah, she would have to use a manual wheelchair. And, like, when she was younger and uh, stuff, like, she said she had more arm strength. So, like, even around the house, like, even though she couldn't do a lot, a lot, like, she was able to, like, walk with crutches to the bathroom or stuff like that. Um... But it was interesting because she was talking about how, like, because since she was also, obviously, again, like, this is all so pre-ADA, pre-curb cuts, pre-everything, that it's, like, they had a, like, her family had a ramp into their house, but then it's, like, yeah, I mean, Judy's life was lived on her block, um, and so it's, like, there's this, like, part in the, in the book about how, like, she wants to go next door to her friend's house, and so her parents, like, wheel her outside, and she goes down the ramp and stuff, and then there's, like, she calls it, like, she, like, explains it as, like, the incline would be invisible to any other pedestrian, but you can feel it as a manual wheelchair user, and I was, like, oh, my God, story of my life, and, like, then she has to go outside of her friend's house, and because her friend's house has stairs, she can't reach the doorbell and go up to the, you know, and so she has to yell and ask her friend to come out and play, um, but, like, the, specifically, like, the whole, oh, but then her friend comes out to play and, like, pushes her, and I'm just, like, I am, I am so, I, my, my, my heart is always so warmed by, like, 
disabled and non-disabled people's like friendships like that where it's just not a question because my friends are were like that too when I used my yeah. manual wheelchair they would just push me without without hesitation you know yeah and even like friendships like as children were like they just adapt and they're like you said where it's just like you want to play exactly so you're gonna do whatever you can to play I remember um my fifth grade uh end of the year field trip uh, we went to the local roller rink, and uh, and my friends would push me in my manual wheelchair while they were rollerblading, and it was so <laughs> fun. It's just, uh-huh. oh man, it's like yeah, that that kind of stuff makes such a difference, and in, in uh, in in not feeling like a burden, but um, right. but like kind of in a similar vein too is like um, I feel like as a kid like especially at like the grocery store and things like that um I feel like I would always feel very in the way like in my chair like unable to swiftly move out of the way of somebody and it's just like I feel like that's kind of something that is so ingrained in me now is like I am always like so sorry like for like physically taking up space right and like apologizing but like just like feeling in the way all the time um yeah Ugh. Meanwhile, people leave their shopping carts in the middle of the aisle and walk fucking five aisles away. <laughs> <laughs> no one's yelling at them. But yeah, I mean, like, even even in the sense of just, like, taking up people's, like, time and energy, you know, where it's, like, you want to make plans. Like, sometimes it's, like, you make plans with somebody, then, like, you know, you're not feeling well that day. You don't have the energy that day to, ex- you know, to expel that type of, like you know to to do that and it's like and and to just like have to cancel plans with people that that's like the the part where that makes me feel like a burden in a way because I always think of it like oh if I cancel plans with someone like what if they don't want to make plans with me anymore because they Mm. don't want to hang out with someone that flakes on them when like I'm not flaking because it's like I got better things to do I'm flaking because I genuinely don't feel well and like you know I used to be very the person I'd push myself to do certain activities and to go certain places and I got to this point where I realized I I can't do that and like the people that I feel like I have in my life right now understand too that like some days I just don't have it in me to hang out or go out to breakfast dinner whatnot and um I'll end up you know canceling on them and then you know we'll we will end up like making up those plans in the future like how last week it was one of those days where I was just having a rough day and I know we talked about FaceTiming that day and I just genuinely couldn't and I'm like I know Cassie understands <laughs> but like you know some other people like you know in the past it was kind of like an issue almost and it would just make me feel really bad of being like man like I should always just you know like I should always push myself to go out I should always push myself to do this because like what if this person doesn't want to hang out with me anymore or like this person doesn't want to see me anymore because I you know, I'm inconsistent on, like, you know, making plans and then keeping up with them. I feel like it's all, like, related to, like, I don't know, almost apologizing for existing or, like, right, just feeling bad about the way we exist in the world. But it's, like, so hard when it's, like, it's, it's, like, this clash of just, like, our existence not being built to, for this society. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, you know, when I think about it, like, sometimes it's like I want to hang out with a friend. And that's where I say with some people, it's like, I'll come over to your house and fold laundry with you. I'll come over when you're doing your dishes or you're watching a movie. I'll come over even I've never heard of it before. Like, I want to do something with you. And, like, I would rather it be a low-key thing because a less planned out thing is better for me to commit to almost than turning around and being like, oh, let's go out this weekend. Let's do this because I'm like... The chances of me actually feeling well to go out that day, it really is a 50-50 shot. And, like, most of the times, like, if I'm not going to a vendor event, then, like, I'm not going to push myself to go out somewhere. And that's why, like, I'm just, like, a lot of my friends, I'm, like, if you go, if you want to, like, sit at your home and you got to just, like, mop your floor or something, like, bro, I got my bucket. Like, I'll come over. Like, you know, <laughs> let's just hang out and do something just so it's, like... I'm at least here, like, you know, we're at least together. You were talking to me about this the other day, and you were like, you need to change your tire, I'm there, and I was <laughs> like, that is beautiful. I know how to plug a tire, I know to ha- I know how to change brakes on a car, bro, who needs a mechanic when you got me? Are you serious? That's- 
Yeah. You know how to change brakes on a car? Like the yeah the I have I literally the one time my dad taught me how to do it on my old car and ever since then it just kind of stuck with me. I that is. Like, I'm. So, I, <laughs> that is the biggest BDE this podcast has ever. I'm just. I'm shook. I'm like I bow down tire? to you. Do you know how to plug a tire? I don't know. How to plug no, a tire. I don't even know what you're saying. <laughs> Like when you get a hole in your tire from a nail or something, I don't and know. Like you don't have to change the whole tire. Put some fucking duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one other kind of just like random overarching before we get into the real meat. Of, the meat and uh, potatoes. Yes. Um. Yeah. One. One more piece of asparagus. <laughs> The uh, appetizer. This is the yeah, appetizer. Yeah, one like more mozzarella stick. Is <laughs> 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 just um, I constantly have this little voice in my head. Anytime I experience pain or extra fatigue or anything like that, that says, "Well, Cassie, if you just exercised more, Oof. you wouldn't have this problem." And it's a hundred percent because that's literally what society says to disabled people. The amount of times I have heard redacted family members. <laughs> <laughs> um, say to my mother that if she just exercised more, I'm like, but see, she can't stand that long because her blood pressure drops. I'm like, she's gonna pass out. I'm like, she can't feel her feet. I'm like, and I, I'm just, and I also think like regarding myself, I'm just like, I. I don't know. I just, I don't even know that people have said it directly to me very often. Although as a child, like both like my, like children's hospital and just like, yeah, people around me, like we're always trying to get me to lose weight, um, which like, I mean, like, I guess thanks for being concerned for my health, but ironically, I'm the healthiest person in the family. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, sure, I'm fat, but, like, get over it. Um, but it's like, well, shit, why do you think I'm fat? I can't fucking extra, I just, I don't know where to fucking begin with that, but, um, but it's like, I don't know, I just think about the fact that it's like, I've literally relearned to walk, like, six times in my life, and, um, literally, it hurts if I walk too much, so why, and then I'm fucking white. I don't. I I don't know what to say to you people. And by you people, I mean the voice in my head. <laughs> you know what's so funny? Like it's so funny when you talk about stuff, and it brings me back so many memories and just so many other instances of my life where I felt the same way and kind of didn't realize it. Where it's almost like, so with people with having CF. You're supposed to, like, we talked about this in my medical, the medical stories episode, where, like, I have to eat, like, double the amount of food to absorb what a normal person would eat from one single serving of a meal. Mm -hmm. And that gave me almost, like, I'll, kind of, like, uh, disordered eating issues because, like... I would, like, be at school, and I would eat, like, my lunches were so much bigger than the other girls' lunches that I sat with at my tables and stuff, and I always felt disgusting eating that much food and being able to eat that much food, because it was always like, oh, I could never eat that stuff, or that stuff's so unhealthy for you, why are you eating stuff like that? And a lot of times, it's like, again, people don't say it too, but it's almost like a voice in your head that makes you think this way, or comparing yourself to other people type of thing, Um, and I always felt like I was fat like I always felt like there was something wrong with me like when I played field hockey I was not a fast runner and I would get very fatigued very fast and and it's so <laughs> bad that I would think of it as like oh I'm not a good runner because I'm fat bestie you have a 30 percent lung function why are you you, have, you literally can't breathe <laughs> I literally can't breathe but the thing is is that a lot of people don't like again of just like you're looking at me I don't actually look like I'm disabled so a lot of the times girls or other people that didn't know me it's like oh you're a slow runner it's because you need to lose weight when it's like I'm a slow runner because of my genetics like I literally cannot be any faster and also as someone that's been going to physical therapy for like the past six months I do think that pain and exercise are just two totally different sectors in your brain like you know, because I do experience a lot of pain and I actually was having this conversation with my physical therapist about chronic pain and how to deal with that and how to use physical therapy as like a tool to manage chronic pain. And a lot of the times it's like, yeah, it will help your pain 
for a while, but then once you stop or you fall out of a certain groove or your body gets too used to the exercises, the pain just comes right back. It's like it just finds a way to worm back into the situation. And like, because I always thought that too, I was like, maybe if I lost weight or maybe if I ran or maybe I walked more, I wouldn't feel so like painful in my body. And it's like, it almost has nothing to do with it any of the time. And half the time I feel worse when I exercise. It's literally like, I, the way I think about it in my brain, sometimes I'm like, it's like training to not be in pain. Yes. Or like, I'm like, well, I'm sure I could walk more, stand more, do more. If I just, tr- like, I'm literally in my mind, I'm like, I would have to train to do that. And I'm like, Cassie, if you have to fucking train to be able to walk places, it's almost like you're disabled. <laughs> like, I'm just like, I like how I'm like, I'm so proudly like, yes, I'm disabled. And then I'm like, yeah, but what if I just fucking train? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you can't train yourself out of this, bitch. But <laughs> Okay. No, you really can't. As someone that was doing, like, consistent hot girl walks for, like, four months straight, I still didn't feel any better than... You're not cured? (laughs) I'm not cured. Hot girl walks, it's... They don't cure your illness. It's... I'm shocked. You know, and I just was always, like, the person... Because people would be like, oh, like, you know, it's the same people that say, like, yoga is good for your mental health. Like, you know, I I do believe that maybe, like, being more mindful of your day-to-day activities and things like that can benefit you in some way. And, you know, I know exercising is, like, some people's, like, quote-unquote, like, therapy or, like, some, you know, things like that. But, like, not for disabled people, man. We're literally built different. (laughs) Facts. We, We cannot... We cannot just, like, exercise our way out of our chronic pain. Well, to to get into the the meat and potatoes, the entree. The entree. Um, something that we were talking about a little bit that I really want to dive into with Sink the people. Into. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> is um, because I think that one of the most interesting dynamics of our show, <laughs> still calling it a show, baby. Uh, yeah. Dude, it's called the Cassie and Mariah show. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, is that I have a visible disability, you have an invisible disability, and what that means when it comes to, like, our perceptions of like our relationship prospects or like starting relationships and things like that um i for the record (laughs) have never been in an in a relationship and to my knowledge nobody has ever been interested in me and it is very hard as a visibly disabled person to not then just go Oh, it's because I'm disabled. Because, I mean, personally, I think I fucking rock. So (laughs) what else could it possibly be? Um, Even though then it's like, you know, when I was regularly watching TikTok, I would end up on the side of TikTok that's like other 24, 25-year-olds who have also never been in a relationship, never been even close. And I'm like, and so then it's like, oh, well, maybe, maybe I'm just normal. But then I'm like, but again, I rock. <laughs> so what could it possibly be? And I think it's like, oh, there's so many like levels. There's so many layers here. Because I'm also just like, to me, it's like, I don't know. I like, we don't see like disabled and non-disabled people represented in relationships in like media and things like that. So I'm like, True. literally to me, I'm like, do non-disabled people even consider having feelings for disabled people like I genuinely don't know I'm like I feel like we're just not even in their mind as part of the dating pool but I am probably making that up (laughs) basically I'm just saying if someone could have a crush on me to validate (laughs) I'm fine (laughs) to validate the thing is what I struggle with when it comes to dating and things like that and I'll preference this by saying that I was in a relationship for like seven years I mean like someone had to like me at some point (laughs) but I also just like kind of felt like even now right like like talking to people on dating apps or just talking to people that I would be like oh I would have a crush on them or pursue them in some type of way it's like I almost feel like I'm leading people on by not telling them like my disability or or chronic illness like from the get-go it's kind of like how I felt like when I was applying for jobs 
and not telling people at first because like you know in 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 the like work world aspect it's like you disclose whatever you want to your boss you know but it's important to disclose that you have a disability in some way so then this way if there's reasons why you can't show up to work or something that impacts your work they can't fire you over your disability they still do they find loopholes because you know capitalism society but like I feel like in some ways it's like I feel like I should tell people that I have a chronic illness but it's also like am I, do I want to tell them? So this way I'm like, oh, if it makes you uncomfortable to date someone like that, you can tell me now and we don't have to do this. Or like a big thing that I, it's like, or even just like people that see disability as like a flaw because like Mm -hmm. my disability is genetic. So like if we have children one day, like there's a 50, 50 chance if we don't go through like IVF therapy that our child could have CF. And a lot of people believe like uh, just the way that people are with like, how they see disabled children even it's like would they even want to be in a relationship with someone that could have like a disabled child you know even though like you know obviously you should love children you love your children regardless of anything and you wrong. shouldn't become a parent if you're not ready to become the parent of a disabled exactly. child exactly yes 100 percent. because you know you have to be ready because we're it. genetic anomalies baby facts bro I mean, but, like, it's interesting, though, because in a way, like, being visibly disabled, it is filtering people out because you wouldn't consider dating me if you wouldn't consider dating a disabled person. You know what I mean? Like, like it's, like, because it's apparent from the get-go, there's nothing to hide. Or, like, nothing, nothing is hidden. Like, I don't have to disclose in that way that you have to. Yeah, and, like, I don't think that I have any, like, from looking at me, I don't have any, like, physical attributes that you would think that I am disabled. I mean, because most CF people, there's no, like, telltale signs that you have it, like, visibly. But, like, a huge thing that I struggle with is that, like, I have a lot of, just across my whole body, I have a lot of, like, uh, scars from medical procedures. And I, and I hate saying it like this, but, like, I think that I feel like I don't look visibly attractive even in like something like a bathing suit because of the scars on my body and it's really hard for me to like even you know come to terms with stuff like that because I'm like oh like I you know girls that wear like crop tops or wear like you know sports bra type of tops when they go out and things like that it's like I love that y'all can do that but I physically I think that like (laughs) if I do it it's like repulsive Mm. which is such like it's a really outdated thought you know but like for me it's something I've always struggled with because like I've always had people that are like you know you're wearing a bathing suit around people that know you but don't know you that well and they're like oh why why like why do you have those like what is that questions the questions and it's always like out of the blue it's always things that like it's not like I'm talking about a surgery I had and I show you my scar like I was literally sweat like when I was a child it was like I have a scar on my stomach that looks like a lightning bolt and it would be called my Harry Potter scar and I'm like yeah maybe that's cool but like not as a little girl like you kind of just you don't even want to be perceived in that way Mm. so like to even just like be perceived in that way is is really hard because like it's also, I think, too, of just being, like, even just, like, gender differences where, like, a lot of times, like, oh, for boys, it's, like, oh, that's really tough if you have that. Yeah. But for girls, it's, like, you should cover that up because that looks gross. Mm. I mean, like, I think it's always – when I, like, honestly didn't even realize this until we were looking through, like, um, photographs one day from a disposable camera. When I was younger, I always wore a wetsuit top to the beach. Like, it's, like, a short sleeve t-shirt yeah, bathing yeah. suit top to the beach like I'd wear normal bathing suit bottoms and always that top and I was always like wow like I wonder like as a child like and I always like even when I got older like I'd always wear like one piece bathing suits I never showed my stomach and I don't know if it's also because like an internalized like fat phobia thing or also just like the fact that I have so many scars that I think it would somebody looking at me would make me feel like would make it me feel uncomfortable and also I would be worried about making them feel disgusted by me Mm. which is so heavy to lay out like that (laughs) damn well it's interesting to hear because I guess it makes me realize I I've I've never personally struggled with that I've got yeah I've got scars up 
up and down all around. <laughs> my, I, I I wish I could see the one on my back more regularly <laughs> because it's probably fucking huge. I mean, um, the, oh, that's that's an interesting thing to discuss. Is that like I I feel I mean. That's the thing is I feel like whenever I am in, like, a relationship, there's going to be so much process. And, like, part of that is the fact that my entire back is numb and has been since my back surgery, like, numb to the touch. Um, And so it's, like, even sometimes, like, I don't know, like, if someone rests their hand on, like, my shoulder in just the right way or whatever, it's just, like, it gives me the fucking (laughs) heebie-jeebies. I don't notice it too much, I guess, when I hug people, but it's, like, I don't know, sometimes, though, I'm just, like, (laughs) Uh, because um if i don't know it feels gross to like physically gross to be numb and not be like you can feel that somebody's touching you but you can't feel it on the surface level right um, like the sensation of someone's hand on your skin yeah yeah oh like my you God. just feel their presence which there. is too bad because i'm sure that one of my love languages is physical touch so i'm fine <laughs> uh, everything's fine um but yeah no that's that's really interesting i yeah i'm just i get i i guess i always just found my scars too cool you know i actually like i thought i'm I'm like coming to terms with it now you know and like there's a type of okay so like i saw this like i'm gonna do my research time is it inappropriate to tell you to get a 95 for lightning mcqueen tattooed on your lightning bolt (laughs) <laughs> I would have I think I would have done it the second I turned 18. <laughs> so so there's a type of okay, I used to follow an artist on Instagram that would draw monsters. And I like I like things when people draw like ghosts, demons, cryptids, stuff like that. So this guy drew a what's called a mimic and it's like a monster that's like pretending to be something else so like it would be like a treasure chest but instead of opening a chest and being treasure it's like a mouth Mm -mm. and there's one that he drew of a girl and her stomach is a mouth and like the way that the mouth was closed looks like the scar i have across my stomach and i was like wow wait that's actually kind of like cool to think of it like (laughs) that i'm (laughs) like a possessed creature that it's like you know you're a mimic where it's like oh that it's like a mouth being closed um and i remember seeing that and i always wanted to message that artist and being like hey like just letting you know like your art like kind of made me come to terms with like the 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 markings on my stomach because i now always see it as a mouth instead of seeing it as like an incision scar i love that yes i mean like maybe i will get a 95 tattooed on my stomach (laughs) for a lightning bolt listen the second you said lightning bolt i was like oh, you have a fucking car scar that's so <laughs> that's why sick. we're friends is because i have a car's imprint marking on my body you were like harry potter and i'm like lightning mcqueen good <laughs> job <laughs> yes let's not think of uh, the transphobic author <laughs> that created harry potter let's think of owen wilson playing lightning mcqueen damn right <laughs> Something else uh, I recently have been slowly listening to as I fall asleep every night, um, the episode of Psychology of Your 20s um, about milestone anxiety, and so it talks partially about relationships, and I think that just is also, like, something I think about literally all the time, Um, because it's, like, I mean, it's about, like, so many things. It's about, like, you know, graduating college by a certain age, like doing, getting married by a certain age, having a certain job, all these things by a certain age kind of thing. And so it's like literally like you feel inherently wrong for not having done certain things by a certain age. And it's like literally the disabled timeline is so fucking screwed up. Like, of course, like we're not you know, achieving things at the same, on the same timeline that society, and it's, like, literally, who is, who is, like, when I think about any of my friends, it's, like, who is, like, on this, like, societal path that we all, somehow, we all have, like, ingrained into our brains, even though it's, like, not real. No, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm the same way as, like, you know, going through college, it took me a Although, I feel like it took me the appropriate amount of time to fin- finish community college. An extra year is not bad. An Same. extra two years is not bad. You know what I mean? Where, like, some people, you know, it's very rare if somebody finishes community college in two years. But, anyway, 
I feel like I just, yeah, where I'm like, man, like a lot of my friends have these like really good paying jobs and they finish college and like they are like happy, like moving forward in their career in that way. And I'm like, wow, like I, I wish I could be like that. Like, I wish I could go like, and that's where I mean, like, I really wish I could go back to school right now, or I really wish that I, I, you know, in hindsight, like kept going, but obviously there was things in my way that prevented me from finishing, you know, with a four-year degree or to continue going back to school. Like I said, in one of these episodes that we recorded about how I got really sick before I ended up going for my bachelor's degree. And, you know, whereas like a normal person really wouldn't face that. It's a rare chance that they would have to drop out of school due to some like illness that came up in their life. Um, and it just makes me like, you know, yeah, like really compare myself to people. And it just makes me like really struggle. Cause even just, I don't know, the just idea of my future like stresses me out because of that reason of like feeling ill prepared and like knowing that I can't be more prepared than I am right now, because it's just what my chronic illness like has you know, in store for me is, like, what I have to worry about first, too. Yeah. And, like, the the episode I was listening to was, like, saying how it's, like, you know, with, like, something like re- relationships, you can think that there's something wrong with you if you haven't been in your first relationship yet, um, or if you're not where you want to be in those regards yet for where you're at in life. And, um, and, yeah, like, how you can see yourself as, like, a failure, like, as if something is wrong with you, and it's kind of, like, it is interesting to compare that to, like, yeah, like, what I was saying about, like, yeah, like, being, like, well, is the reason I've never been in a relationship because I'm disabled, you know, and it's, like, that's, like, the, and it's, like, I'm sure that all people have, like, who are in similar positions have that flaw, like, their own, like, thing that they pin it on, you know, but it's, like, it is interesting and also very shitty that the thing that I have it pinned on is being disabled, you know. And, like, I think to me, for me, too, it's, like, because I otherwise, like, have such, like, self-esteem, self-confidence, whatever, that it's, like, it's also really easy to, like, um, to, like, look at all the other aspects of my life, um, and, like, compare myself to other people and be, like, well, I feel like they would pick, you know, it's, like, always easier for people to like pick anyone else over you because it can just factor out the the non-dis or factor out the disabled part or whatever and it's just like I know that literally well I mean I don't know I was gonna say I know that nobody thinks like that but it's like "Mm, do I (laughs) assholes think like that (laughs) yeah which and I don't want to be with an asshole so shouts out for (laughs) being disabled thanks for weeding y'all out yeah yeah taking herself off the roster anyway <laughs> i mean i even think of that too of just like dating people nowadays and stuff it's like i like i've seen on some dating apps where people disclose their disability like if people talk about like you know they'll put it right now in the open or they'll make a joke about it and things like that and i remember i had on my profile that i had something about a chronic illness and i remember somebody commented something about it and it wasn't negative but it also wasn't a positive thing and I, I, get, I think the person was like, oh, well, I have mental health issues, so we can bond over that stuff. And I'm like, I do think that, like, it's like, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's obviously different, you know, talking about a disability, chronic illness, than talking about a mental health issue. Like, you know, like, I, I, it, it's, it's a different case. So I was just like, no, I actually don't want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, obviously, there can be mental health stuff that can be, like, disabling, but, like, not, and probably not in the way they meant it. And they also probably wouldn't have said that, said that if they identified as, like, disabled. <laughs> right, yeah. But, I mean, I think that, like, speaks also just more broadly to the fact that, like, sometimes, sometimes when I think about it, it's, like, hard for me to imagine, like, a lot of people our age being an, mature enough to be with a disabled person. Yeah. Not to talk shit on our entire age group, but <laughs> I mean... No, you're, you do, talk your shit. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I, I mean, and I'm obviously specifically referring to non-disabled people here. It's like, I, I just, I don't know. I feel like 
it requires communication and understanding and emotional intelligence and I don't know it just requires like almost an extra level of seriousness that yes some people may not be ready to handle yeah no you're 100 percent right I mean even just like the emotional intelligence part of like some people like don't some people aren't like socially aware you know and, and like they're just not I hate to think of it as, like, they're not online enough to understand. Mm. Even the issues that disabled people face, you know, societal expectations and also just of, like, inaccessibility in day-to-day life. Like, oh, you want to go out on a date with this person, but you got to make sure, like, the place you're going to is accessible to them. And yes, I feel like some people don't, they don't think of stuff like that. Well, and I, like, I think for me, it would be hard for me to want to fucking teach someone i could i obviously happy to like you know share in my specific situation but to have to teach people like what fucking accessibility is like just that sounds annoying as hell which like i mean i guess most of my friends have learned just from being friends with me and observing things and being like that sucks that's shitty or whatever but like yeah i mean like i feel like yeah, any of my friends who, like you said, are online enough, it's like, yeah, they. I don't have this issue of having to be like, we have to make sure the place we're going yes. is accessible or whatever. Like, they just, they just know. <laughs> and even, too, of, like, you know, because, like, dating people, it's not like you're going to go on one date, find your true love, and happy ever after. It's like, ha- so having to go through that situation each time Oof. with a new person, that's exhausting. Oh, God, I haven't even thought of that. Ew, ew, ew. <laughs> Ew, ew, never mind. I'm fine being single. Ew. Oh my god. <laughs> Disgusting. Having to make sure every date is it. No, literally, nobody ever fucking surprise take me somewhere. Ever. I will. <laughs> I'm not, I shouldn't threaten people's lives. Um, but I'm just like, no. The thought of not being able to know where I'm going in advance because I need to personally go on Google Maps, go on Google Street View go uh, look at the photos posted on google of the play (laughs) i'm actually fine and sane um listen i just yeah no i don't oh oh, i don't i don't trust other people to make my accessibility decisions for me so (laughs) oof that's sickening actually you know that's not true i do because i have friends who will go scout accessibility at places but the difference though is like friends versus going on a date with someone for the first or second time and this is why (laughs) you need (laughs) you need to be a mutual friend you need three references (laughs) <laughs> yes if you don't have three you gotta have three recommendations you gotta be a mutual friend you gotta have girls that can vouch for you like there's a lot of standards you know that you gotta you gotta hit the mark on and you know what you know what that that podcast episode literally was like as if dating just isn't hard you know like there's nothing wrong with you dating's just hard and i'm just like now that we're talking about this i'm like oh my god it's too much work i don't have time for this but if anyone wants to fall in love let me know <laughs> <laughs> and I also think another thing too is like when I was on Bumble back in the heyday of February of this year, you could put like what your COVID guidelines were. So Ooh. like you could put that like you want to go somewhere like at, you know you want the person to wear a mask, you want the first date to be a virtual date, like you want only outside restaurants to be your date, and like the person almost has to read that stuff and accept that that's what your you know requirements are in a way um i don't know i actually don't remember if it was like they have to accept it before they match with you or accept before you start a conversation with them Mm. um because on bumble i only had a conversation with one person because i was too scared to select anybody (laughs) because i have rejection sensitivity because i have adhd (laughs) um and I always really liked that because I was like, okay, I'm going to, like, put all, everything out there. So this way I, I don't even have to tell this person. They have to read it from Bumble because I was like, you know, another thing of, like, planning a date with somebody. It's like I would rather go to an outside restaurant or an mm-hmm. outside place at first. And I don't want to go to your house. <laughs> like, I want to go somewhere, like, a public outdoor space. And I kind of think of that, like, well, that's why I'm, like, summer right now. And that's where I hate it. Where summer being in summer right now makes me think that I should go back into dating because I can actually utilize outside options for stuff. Um, because I'm like, I can't do this stuff in the winter if someone wants to go to a club. 
Somebody Ew. wants to go inside? No way. I'm sorry. If anybody is ever like, Mariah, you want to hit the club? I'm going to be like, yeah, and I'll be right behind you too. Like, <laughs> fucking keeping my eyes on you. Yeah. I mean, like, I guess club in the sense of a bar. Like, inside. Oh. Is that what books mean? I have so many questions. That's what I mean. I, here's the thing. New Jersey, okay. Hit the club. New Jersey is a little different if you ever watch Jersey Shore. Because, you know, every New Jersey person is like the show Jersey Shore. <laughs> Kidding, obviously. <laughs> I just <didn't> fucking <laughs> haven't watched. Your face watched. is very confused. I, I haven't um, watched it. It means nothing to me. <laughs> you don't know New Jersey culture. Wow. You know, if there's an Oregon Shore, I'd be watching that shit up. Oh, I'm sure you've seen every episode of Portlandia. Oh, I love Portlandia. (gasps) Fred Armisen, icon. Kyle Macklin is the president, or the mayor of Portlandia. I love Twin Peaks. Anyway, so I um, (laughs) I remember what I was talking about. Oh, it's like going clubbing. Yeah, it's like, (laughs) obviously, it's like just going to a bar. You're going to a bar that has like a little bit of a dance floor. I listen I only went out like pre my my years of going out to bars and stuff like that pre 2020 was a very finite period of time so I didn't go out a lot and like I was in a relationship so like I'm not going to bars to do that stuff anything like that so like nowadays I'm like oh man like I actually don't even want to go drinking because I'm I feel old as hell I had, a, <laughs> I had a sangria at Chili's yesterday and I was about to fall asleep in the booth how can I have a drink anywhere <laughs> I'm, I'm tired hitting the club actually means hitting up Chili's <laughs> <laughs> hitting up Chili's and going to bed at 7 o'clock <laughs> um so, you know, I, and I also think even just like in the sense of like sometimes I'll go to vendor events and I'll be honest when I got my mask on and I'm dri- but I got like my cute outfit on, I got my makeup on, I'm slaying a bit. And sometimes I just want maybe a compliment from a man. But I'm also like, I feel like sometimes wearing a mask almost makes you look unavailable. I have a lot of thoughts on this. Yes, give it. Let's go. I have been <laughs> psychologically retrained to find anyone wearing a mask to be extremely hot. Yes, yes. I, I, I'm, I don't even know what to say besides that. I literally, I, I see someone wearing a mask. My brain says hot. And that is that. At that point, we're in love. I mean, like, sometimes people look hotter with a mask. And then when they take their mask off, you're like, oh, the feeling's gone. Genuinely. And I just think nothing is hotter than a man in a mask and a suit. No, qu- for, no further questions, your honor. <laughs> Preferably if he graduated high school before you were born. (laughs) 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 And then a kind of like bridging the bridging the two topics we wanted to cover today is that I feel like I feel like I can't even, like, I don't don't even want to consider really dating people while I'm still living at home, but only because I feel like, only because society has made me feel like it's unacceptable (laughs) at our age, like, as if I'm, as if it's a problem. As if you're, like, a baby. Yes, as if I'm a child. Like, yeah, I'm going home to my parents' house. Like, yes, I fucking am. (laughs) It, like, infantizes you. No, I get that, too. Like, you know, and I always think, uh, because, you know, again, I've just seen people online that are like, oh, like, I wouldn't date a man that, like, still lives with his mom, lives in his mom's basement, yada, yada, yada. And it's like, why? Like, why, though? Like, sometimes, here the, here's the thing. Nowadays, too, it's very expensive to live on your own. Some people don't want to live with multiple roommates. They like their own space. Some people are just comfortable living with their parents. Sometimes maybe your parents need help with, help with things around the house. Like, you know, there's so, there's just so many reasons that's to live with your parents. And it's very, people are very, almost like privileged and like lucky to be able to they get their finances together to move out and I know like there's also other circumstances some people like grew up in abusive households cannot live in their parents house anymore or like their parents move they can't live there like obviously that's a totally other circumstance but like right now for like us living at our parents house is just what is easier for us to do right now and what works for us and yeah like sometimes it's weird to be like oh like you're dating somebody like 
and now you want to have like alone time with them it's like you can't have that unless you go to each other's houses Mm -hmm. and if they also live with their parents too that's that makes it harder for both of you guys yeah and like i don't know i think it's just kind of absurd that there is such a stereotype about it because multi-generational households are so fucking normal in so many other cultures that it's yeah. just like so absurd to me because it's like i don't know i i'm honestly i'm surprised it's not more common because the caregiving infrastructure in this country is so fucking broken that you would think it would be more common for people to like live in multi-generational um households but something about fucking our our fellow white americans uh the pull yourself up by the bootstraps crowd yes yeah literally it's like you know it, it's like there's some sort of shame in it and it's like i just and it's i don't know it's And you know what, you know what I fucking hate is when people, like, make those kinds of comments about, like, yeah, people still, like, living with their parents or whatever, and then it's, like, it's, like, even if they're talking to you about it, about other people, if they're talking to you about it and you live at home with your parents, it fucking feels like shit. Yes. Even though if you were to be like, hey, that actually hurts my feelings when you say that. If you were to say that, they'd be like, oh, well, obviously your situation's different. It's like, how do you know that person's situation's the same? Yeah. And I just don't give a shit. <laughs> like, it's like, right. it doesn't make it feel any, like, any, any better, any different. Like, it feels like shit. Yeah. No, like, it's literally like, it's like, oh, well, not you. And it's like, yeah, but the person you're talking about could be in a very similar, say, very similar situation as you. So how do you, you're acting like you know that person's life. And cracks knuckles. Um, here we fucking go because the housing situation in this country for disabled people especially is completely fucked. If I rent an apartment that is quote unquote accessible, it is very well may not be. And it may not have grab bars. It may not have the things I need for it to actually be accessible. And I have to pay myself for those things, even though I don't own the place and it's increasing the value for the fucking landlord. I would have to pay for my own accessibility. And also, most accessible, like, there's so little accessible housing, let alone accessible housing that's affordable, let alone accessible housing that happens to be where you want to live, let alone, like, just actually fully accessible housing. Because literally when I was looking at it for a project for my housing class, like, I was looking at every accessible apartment I looked at, they would have, like, the fridges where the freezer would be on top. Am I just supposed to not use the freezer? Or they would have, like, the uh, the washing machines stacked. And I'm just like, am I supposed to not do laundry? Like, it's j- or they would be, like, top loading. Um, and I'm just like, right. am I supposed to not do laundry? Like, I just, it's like stuff like that where I'm just like, yeah, of course I'm not in a huge rush to move out because the housing situation is completely fucked. No, right. Like, and I'm on, like, an alternative side of things where, like, it's really hard for me to like sustain income in a way to be able to financially be dependent on myself yeah. and to afford to live somewhere. Cause like in New Jersey, like, you, you know, it, it's hard to, it, it's hard. To, I like where I live. I like where I live on the coast of New Jersey, but living here, those homes are like vacation homes for people or they're beach homes for people. So like your rent is very expensive. It's expensive to live in this state. So what am I supposed to do? Move somewhere else if I want to live on my own? Change my entire network of doctors? Have to find different health insurance? Like, it's physically impossible. And it's like, the mental unpacking that I would have to do, it's like, I might as well just live at home. Uh, Yeah, and it's like, if you were going to go through all of that effort of changing all your health, you might as well move here and we can live together. It would be iconic. Um, It kind of would be. We would have a podcast room and everything. Oh my God. We would have a craft room. Oh, I mean, hell yeah. Hell yeah. And that's, but that's the thing where it's like, how come the only people that even like I would feel comfortable living with is another disabled person? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, imagine, like, me being your roommate and not feeling well for majority of days straight and, like, leaving things, like, untidy. Dishes, cleaning, yeah. You would not yep. understand that. No. Nope. And it would fall back on me. Yep, because every time that I've ever heard any of my friends who have moved out complain about roommates, I'm like, I literally will never be able to live with somebody else because... Yeah. I, they would not understand that I cannot contribute equally to the housework. Yes. 
and that it's like I have a different like level of not even like quality of space because I do feel like I keep my space clean Mm -hmm. but it's like there has to be flex for like existing as a disabled person and like and like with the financial aspect it's so interesting too because the whole place of where I'm even at in life right now and the fact that I'm still in college right now so obviously it makes sense to live at home is all because it goes back to not wanting to take out loans for school because of being disabled like it's all connected yeah I mean that was even like when I went to community college I didn't take out loans and it was like the same thing of just being like, well, what if I cannot, like, get a job where I could pay these loans off? Exactly. And, like, when I was having this conversation just with myself, with my parents, you know, because, again, I'm 26. And, like, having to worry about finding your own health insurance plan and things like that. And it's like, you know, I don't get offered health insurance through my job. And I feel like it's like, it's like I wouldn't be able to work a nine to five job. I wouldn't be able to work all these jobs that like provide health insurance, provide all these extra things, even provide enough income to live out of my parents' house. Like I cannot do that. And again, of just like comparing yourself to other people, like I have friends that can do that stuff. And like, that's amazing. And it's like, I strive for that, but that future is so far out of my reach that it almost feels silly to like idolize something like that for myself because I won't I I won't be able to have it and I know some people it's like oh well why is it such a big deal who cares whatever it's like it's a big deal to me because I want financial security yeah like I don't want to be like struggling like this it's complete shit that your options are like work more than you can physically handle in order to have health insurance or be in forced poverty to have government yeah. health and sh- like it's the whole thing is completely fucked and like because then it's like if you're living in forced poverty then you're also dependent on you know uh you know public housing like the whole like uh, food stamp like the whole which obviously i'm pro all of these things but like you shouldn't have to fucking live in poverty to have your basic needs met like exactly there's the fact that there's no in between and it's like like you said it's like pretty much if you're not working full time you're not being offered benefits and hell half the time even when you are working full time you're still not being offered benefits yeah it's no the whole thing is just yeah like it depends on your job it depends on where you live it depends on like your median income like it's just there's so many factors that play into it and like being disabled chronically ill people it's like how the hell am I supposed to reach these standards? Is this the part where I climb up on my soapbox, do 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 do, and I'm like, wow. So we need to build more public housing. <laughs> yes, accessible public housing. Build ex- build actually accessible. Pu- you know what? The housing that is um, paid for with federal money has to follow the 504, which has better housing guidelines than, um, uh, like. Okay, basically, there's three different sets of guidelines that, like, housing has to follow. Um, There's the ADA, which only applies to, like, the public parts. So that's going to be, like, the rental office or whatever. Um, The sidewalks outside the apartment, you know, stuff like that. Like the laundry room. I don't even know if that... I don't think the laundry room counts. Oh, because it's, like, private property. It's for the... It's for residents, Yeah. Um, True. And then there's the 504, which is only for housing projects that receive financial, uh, federal money. Um, And so they have their own housing guidelines that from what I remember reading, the accessibility guidelines were a lot stronger. And then there's the Fair Housing Act guidelines, which only applies to... uh, like multi-family homes so like apartment buildings like i think that are greater than four units or something like that and those guidelines were absolute shit i only skimmed them because it's a 300 page document that was uh published before i was born and hasn't been updated um and it said "Mm, if the laundry room is accessible and you don't want to pay for a ramp to be installed to it because again you had to pay for your own fucking shit um that you know your friends could just do your laundry for you Uh -uh. so that's the state of the world it's so bad it's so bad it's so fucked
it makes it so much more stressful to just like and it's like that's why people don't want to fucking move out of their parents house man especially disabled people i bet there's so many non-disabled people well maybe not because maybe our listeners are probably more empathetic at this point um but they better be you've been listening to this many episodes of this (laughs) um but i'm like i don't know i bet like if non-disabled people heard this shit they'd be like we're not talking about you when we say you should be moved out of your parents house and it's like I don't care. You're you're making it sound like it's a bad thing, and therefore I believe it's a right. bad thing because you said it's a bad thing. <laughs> right? Yeah. Exactly. Like it doesn't matter if you're not talking about us or not. You're you said it's a bad thing because if it's a bad thing for non-disabled people, why doesn't that also apply to disabled? You know what? I don't know. It's like one of those weird things where it's like I don't know. It's like obviously we don't want it to apply to us, but if it applies to other people, how does it not apply to us, you know? Right. Yuck. And I think also too is like again, like we live in this country that's a very pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You mm-hmm. got to make this work. You got to make this whatever, you know, it's like y- you have to be independent or you're a loser. Like, you know, and that just breeds so much that breeds so many issues because like Dude, like, I don't know a single person that's, like, not struggling with stuff right now. Like, unless you have a really good paying job, like, I don't know how you're swinging this. Especially people that live by themselves. Because I, ideally, I think I'd like to live by myself. Because, again, of just, like, being able to leave dishes in the sink when you're not feeling well and that stuff gets attended to. Or even just the fact of, like, I get sick so easily. I cannot have fucking roommates that are constantly ill having sick people over and then I get sick like why I don't want to worry about that that's one less thing to worry about but also living on your own is so expensive are we forming a marriage pact (laughs) (laughs) I I've I've formed too many packs with people but I will definitely form a marriage pact with you (laughs) damn right I just I'm like yeah I I think it's like literally I I I really can't imagine just like living with a random friend or stranger not it not I would never live with a stranger but like I just like it's yeah no I don't and and literally that's like half the motivation of like not like that is something I think about a lot now where I'm like okay I need to think about jobs that are literally gonna pay me out the fucking ass so that way I can afford to live somewhere alone that is truly accessible to me and all I just it's and then again just it makes me nervous because again being a girl living alone yeah like stuff like that i we're not gonna go there because i will have a panic attack tonight but like that stuff makes me <laughs> my fucking like, dreams last <laughs> oh my god <laughs> cassie is we we've both have dreams recently about people breaking into homes like intruders and stuff and that's shit's scary bro i can't imagine in real life that but that's what women face with when they live by themselves like I've seen posts where they say to leave a pair of men's work boots outside your rooms or whatever. So this way people think that like a man lives there. And it's like, why don't you just not break? In? Why don't you just not stalk women and break into their homes? Like, wh- <laughs> why do we have to like literally gaslight people <laughs> into thinking that we live with others? Gaslight gate, keep girl boss, physical safety. <laughs> physical safety and Fuck. accessibility. Life uh, is pain and the world is burning. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. I always think of this. And the thing is, too, I always think of this Joyce Manor lyric in their song, Stairs, um, where they say, yeah, and I'm 26 and I still live with my parents. Christ, I can't do dishes. Like, it, this whole thing. And I, as someone who's turning 26, like, I literally think about that lyric every single day. Because, again, of just, like, it makes me feel like a loser and I know they're not talking about me but like they are they're still talking about like people that are 26 and live with their parents which is still me and I feel like I don't know I feel like the only people I feel like at the end of the day most people probably don't care and they don't believe in that even though we all feel these societal expectations right but I do feel like there are some people who like it's almost like their own nervousness about not meeting their own expectations for themselves makes it project onto other people or just like they take the expect like the societal blueprint of how your life should go like they take it more seriously more literally and then they expect everyone else to do the same and it's just like yeah it's okay that people are on a different path than you. It's literally not that deep, and it doesn't affect you. And if it does affect you, then you can make choices that make it not affect you, you know? 
Right, exactly. Like, mind your own business. Worry about yourself. So for the segment in this episode, our ending segment, we're going to do our now playing segment. We just talk about the media we've consumed, the music, the TV shows, the movies, all that fun stuff. So Cassie, what's now playing in your life? Well, I just, today I finished the new Never Have I Ever uh, season on Netflix. That is a very good show. I mean, it's very high school or oriented, but that's fine. I, You're a teenage I'll, adult. And I just, I eat that shit up. It's, 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 I feel like it's very well written. I feel like it's very interesting. Um, <clears throat> but before, before I realized that there was a new season of that, I was fully on my bullshit. I watched, well, remember when I said Joe Jonas was still hot? Well, <laughs> that then carried over into me rewatching Camp Rock 1 and 2, followed by, that then obviously led to me needing to rewatch all the high school musicals, uh, which I did. And then when I did that, I uh, decided to rewatch Motocross, which, mm, where do we begin with that? That just, that movie, it's like, there's, it's such an interesting, like, where, like, the sister is, like, pretending to be her brother. I'm like, this is, like, so close to, like, them making, like, a movie about being trans, but, like, not actually doing it. And then there's also so much subtle uh, transphobia and homophobia, but I also think it was my queer awakening. So <laughs> there's that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's, that's bullshit I've been on in terms of what I've been watching. Um, and then I've been listening to, uh, yesterday on the train, I, I've, I had to make a playlist of, I feel like so many artists I follow were dropping new music lately that I was like, okay, I just got to throw this all on a playlist so I don't lose any of it. And so yesterday I listened to Twin Flame by Maude Latour, or however you say her last name, um, I found her on TikTok during the pandemic. I say, I've never heard of her. Oh, she's got some fucking bops. Um, and her new EP is so, so good. Usually she releases songs just one at a time, but um, I think this was maybe... No, I feel like the, and I feel like she's done an EP before, but she just doesn't do it often. Um, and so, But this whole thing, it's very, very good. The production was insane, and I'm really glad I listened to it in headphones first because I rarely... Well, I guess I do it more often now that I read Transit so much, but... Um, like, there's parts where, like, things will be, like, happening in one ear, like, the, the, oh, I, yeah, like, when it happens, have... yeah, like, like, an echo or something, like, a type of, or instrument plays in one ear, not the other, yeah, like, or, like, a little, like, background vocal thing that happens where it, like, alternates quickly between each ear, it's so, it's so satisfying, um, and then I also listened to Niall Horan's new album, uh, which is just so good. I honestly, even though, like, I excitedly bought tickets, like, to a show next year, um, I, like, honestly just haven't listened to a ton of his solo stuff yet, even though I know it's good and, like, I have lightly listened to it, um, but his, yeah, his new album is so, so good. And then, um, now that Louis Tomlinson has started his uh, U.S. tour. I've been listening to his set list for it because I'll be seeing him in a couple weeks. Um, and so, yeah, I've been listening to that, and it's all been very fun and good. It's very light and fun lessons. <laughs> yes, I love that. Um, for me, I got back into re-watching BoJack Horseman on Netflix. Um, I love that sad horse. Um, I think this is the third time I've rewatched it. It's like, it's a bit of a heavier show with the way that they talk about mental health and also just like people's behaviors, friends letting you down, not forgiving people that have hurt you type of thing. Like it's a very, it's a heavier show to watch, but like there's a lot of funny bits in it. And like, I, um, I find myself just cracking up when I watch that show. So it's been like my nightly rewatch. I'll just put on a few episodes before I go to bed. It's really easy to blow through because it's like 25 minute episodes. They're very easy to kind of just like watch, digest and, you know, have wrap up kind of. Um, I got back into like listening, like punk music that I listened to when I was in middle school, which I know is very specific. Um, 
I found like I always find Spotify playlists that really hit for me. So like one of the ones that I was listening to today have like it has like Rancid, Bad Religion, No Effects, Some Forty One, Early Blink One Eighty Two, stuff like that. Like, and I just I don't know it takes me back because like when I was heavily listening to Green Day back in that day, I listened to a lot of bands that like Green Day was inspired by. So like another band was like Operation Ivy, and they've only come out with like one album I believe so I was really into them and I you know this playlist has a bunch of that stuff and like Streetlight Manifesto and and everything like that like I just I don't know I go through like a ska phase every now and then as well so maybe and it's just fun it's fun music to like it's not a phase it's a lifestyle (laughs) it's not a phase it's a lifestyle um so it's fun to it's just fun music to bop to in the car like it's fun it's fun you're so real though about the spotify are the spotify playlists you listen to are they like actually made by spotify or are they random ones you find no they're like made by spotify and like it's because i'll find playlists that are like you know early 2000s pop punk Mm -hmm. or like teen angst and like oh yeah, yeah, yeah but like i don't like the ones where it has like new age pop punk music like bands i've never heard of before like post warp tour era bands because i just like don't i'm not i'm not gonna listen to your music i'm not you're you're listening for the throwbacks and like the stuff you already know yeah i i something i've been enjoying more lately on spotify has been that like you can look up, like, because I, I always do this for, like, set lists. I used to make my own set list playlist, and then I was like, oh, you can literally, because people have their playlist set to public, if you just look them up, there's yes. a good chance they're already there. And so then that got me thinking of, like, I literally this morning on the way to get groceries, I was like, I want to listen to just the emo hits from One Direction. So I just looked up 1D emo or One Direction emo or whatever, and it pulled up a playlist that did the job, you know? And I was just like, that is really satisfying. No, like, there's a bunch of playlists I'll find, too, that are, like, um, very specific moods. Like, one that has a lot of, like, Paramore from their self-titled or, like, um evermore by taylor swift or like Mm. there's another artist i like that's her name is penelope scott and she i don't know what you would call her music she's not pop it's very like in it's very like intricate pieces that she writes. there's a song that she wrote that's called rat and it's basically about elon musk and it's (laughs) like in a way of like how she like idolized him as being a very like tech person but then realizes that he's a douchebag so now she hates him and um i listen to a lot of mitski she's always my top artist every year and people say that that's concerning (laughs) um uh and yeah i mean like of course phoebe like i just love i don't know there's a very specific spotify playlist that i get recommended and they always hit Um, so I'm always going to be listening to a new playlist. Um, I also am still playing Tears of the Kingdom, of course. I, uh, I, uh, you know, okay, I am kind of getting bored of it, but I think I'm getting bored of it because, like, there's so much to do that it's overwhelming and it makes me not want to play because it's so overwhelming. Um, but I, like, microdose playing it. Like, I'll play for, like, a few hours a day, and then I'm, like, content with the amount that I played. I also would watch, like, sometimes, like, during the day, like, on cable TV, I'll find, like, episodes of Parks and Rec, and I'll watch that. I know I said I don't like Chris Pratt, but, like, he's funny as Andy Dwyer. Um, and I just love watching old episodes of Parks and, you know, like, the, the early seasons of Parks and Rec. I feel like that's kind of just what I've been into lately. Not too much going on in my brain over here, but... I'm having fun, I guess. <laughs> I love that. I know that's that's really good. I love the way you said cable TV and uh, for all the young people <laughs> out there, I hope it didn't age us too much. <laughs> Perks of living with your parents, I guess. I mean, fact. I, I'm working on convincing my mom to cut it, but she still refuses. It's it serves a purpose for the older people. Yeah, to watch the shitty local news. <laughs> oh my god, right. Well, that's a wrap on this week's episode. Be sure to follow the Cassie and Mariah show wherever you listen to podcasts at TCMS Pod on Twitter and Instagram, and look out for new episodes every Wednesday. Bye. Bye.